I'd like to introduce the ANOVA test by explaining some of the theory behind what we are doing in conducting this type of analysis. So let's begin with some definitions. Here are some words that we need to know going in because we're going to see them turn up quite a lot. Now, first of all, the independent variable is going to be called a factor. If we're doing three independent variables, we might call that a three-factor model. Each condition of the independent variable is called a level or a treatment. The symbol for the number of treatments in a factor is k, and the total number of subjects in that factor is n sub k, or lowercase n. The total number of subjects in our whole experiment would be the uppercase n. So let's say that we're doing something that revolves around uh, a weight loss technique. The factor could be weight loss, and the levels could be three or four different types of diets. In that case, let's say there were four diets, then we would have a K equal to four. That's the number of treatments. That's the number of different levels. And there were 10 people in trying each of these four diets for a total of 40. Our N sub K, uh, the number of subjects in a factor would be 10, and the large n, the uppercase n, would be 40. So the differences that we find in weight loss based upon the type of diet, those would be called effects or sometimes treatment effects. So the logic behind analysis of variance is that we have variability going in two different directions, two different ways. The two ways in which we will have variability are between and within. Between groups and within groups. So between groups would be comparing one type of diet to the other type of diet, this group compared to that group. And the differences between the groups is due to the treatment effect. This one works better than that one. However, as we've already learned, anytime there's variability, there's always gonna be error. There's always gonna be the effect of chance just random variability that we can't account for. So the differences between will be due to the actual treatment effect blended with a difference that is also due to error or chance. However, within the groups, that variability can be explained solely by error or chance. And what we're going to do is come up with a formula that allows us to divide the variance between by the variance within, canceling out the effects of chance, leaving us with just the variance between being due to a treatment effect. So in explaining between and within, let's use some different kinds of examples. Uh, let's say that you are shopping for a pair of blue jeans and you're interested in the price of those jeans. So what are three stores where you could go shopping for blue jeans? I'm going to make some up. Let's say that you could go shopping at Walmart or Target or go to the mall and shop at The Gap. Now, will the price of jeans be the same at each store? Probably not. Which would be the least expensive? I'm going to go with Walmart on that. What would be the most expensive? Probably The Gap. So the difference in price from Walmart to Target or The Gap, is that differences between or differences within? Those are differences between the types of stores. But if you go to Walmart, will every pair of jeans be exactly the same price? Probably not. There will be a range of prices. Is that a difference between or within? That's a difference within. So within Walmart, we have some variability in price, but between Walmart, Target, and The Gap, we have variances between in prices. A second example would be crops. We have three plots of land in which we plant one using fertilizer number one, a second using fertilizer number two, and then we have a control group where we don't use any fertilizer at all. Variance between would be what? It's the difference in height of the crops or the yield of the crops from plot one to plot two to plot three. It's the differences between fertilizer one, fertilizer two, and the control group. That's between. But how about within a plot? 
is every single, we'll say, stalk of corn going to be exactly the same? No, some are going to be a little taller, some a little shorter. Some of the corn got planted along the edge of the field and maybe it's closer to some water and some got planted somewhere else where it didn't grow quite as well and a little, little too much shade. You see, there's always going to be variability within the plot, but there will be variability and probably a greater amount of variability between the three different plots. Or think about the rooms in your home. Are they all the same temperature? No. So what room would be the warmest room in your house? I'm going to go with the attic. How about the coldest or coolest room? Maybe the cellar. And what's a room that is pretty comfortable? The living room. What would be differences between? It's the difference in temperature between the cellar, the living room, and the attic. And how about variances within? Is every place in your living room exactly the same temperature? Or maybe if you go over next to the window where the sunshine is coming in, there's a warm patch over there where, where your dog likes to go and lay down on the hardwoods in the sunshine and soak up the warmth. There's part of it that's warmer and on the other side of the room is a little bit cooler. So there's variability within a room and there's variability between rooms. Finally, radio station quality. Think of three different radio stations on your dial. What do you like to listen to? So there's a country station and a rock and roll station and a rap station. Which one would you tune in? What would you like to listen to? It's the variability in the quality of the songs from one station to the next. That would be variability between. But is every song on the station that you like equally likable? Do you like every song as much as every other song? Uh, some you like a little more, some you like a little less. So there is variability within that radio station. But overall, there's one station that you like more than the others. That's variability between. Even though within that one radio station, you have a minor amount of variability. So typically what we find is there is more variability between than there is within. By dividing the between by the within, so variability between divided by variability within, we can create a ratio. And this is called the F ratio. And it's named after Sir Roald Fisher, who was an early statistician. The ANOVA is therefore called an F test. And the F ratio is a measure of the variance between treatments divided by the variance within treatments. Now remember that this F ratio, if it is statistically significant, tells us only that there was a statistically significant difference between at least two of the groups in our experiment, but it doesn't tell us which ones. For that, we would still need a post hoc. So I want you to think about something. What would be the smallest number that we could get with our F ratio? Let's look at the definition of the F ratio. It's treatment effect plus chance divided by chance. Well, let's say there was no effect at all. So zero out the treatment effect, we would be dividing chance by chance. So what number do you get when you divide any number by itself? You always get the number 1. So if there is no treatment effect, we will get numbers around 1. We're simply dividing two error rates by themselves. If the treatment effect does exist, we're going to get a number greater than 1. Now can we have a number less than 1? Sure. We could have variability in the chance between and the chance within. So we could get a F value less than 1, but could we have a value less than 0? We could not, because we are dividing two positive numbers. Therefore, as we look at the distribution of F ratios, the F ratio will always be positive. We will never have an F ratio less than 0. Or if you do, you've made a mistake somewhere and you need to go back and find it. But the numbers are going to tend to stack up around 1. If the null hypothesis is correct and there's no difference between the groups, then the between subjects factor is going to zero out. We're going to only be comparing variance within 
and that division is going to work out to around 1. So our F ratio is the variance between divided by the variance within. If there is no variance between, then the within factors will stack us up around, one, around a value of 1. The further that the F ratio is from 1, the more likely it represents significant differences. And so we could still set a critical value, which we'll find in the F table. And if we get an F ratio beyond that set critical value, that fence, if it's in that shaded area of our alpha equals 0.05, well, then we know that there is a statistically significant difference among at least two of the groups, and we would reject the null hypothesis. So let's see how this would look with some numbers. Here I have four different approaches to dieting, and they are one group randomly assigned to use willpower. There's five people in that group. Another using a low-fat diet. Another group using a low-carb diet. And a fourth group, compulsive exercise. So how many factors do we have? Not four. We just have one factor. These are all diet approaches. Now, if we had one factor, which was diet approach, and a second factor, which was whether or not they took some kind of weight loss drug, that would be two factors. But here we're talking about just an approach to dieting. So we have one factor with four levels or four treatments. Therefore, K equals four. Now we have variability. In other words, if you look at all of those numbers in the table, they're not the same. They differ. They are variable. So we have variability between and variability within. The difference in the means of each group, that is the variability between. Those are the treatment effects. They represent treatment plus chance. And the variability within, so if you look at compulsive exercise, the first person had a 2.54, the second a 3.10, those are different numbers. The variability within that group was just due to chance. So let's talk about the sources of these variabilities. The overall differences, that's our variance total. So all of these groups, both between and within, all of that is our total amount of variance. The variance within is what we would find in any particular group. So there is variance within the willpower group, variance within the low fat group, variance within the low carb group, and variance within the compulsive exercise group. Only within those boxes that I've drawn would we have variance within, and that is due to chance. The variance between we would find by looking at the means of each group. So the mean weight loss for the willpower group was 0.66, about two-thirds of a pound. That is different than the mean weight loss for the low fat group, which is a 2.67 pounds. The variance for the low carb group, 3.70. The difference between 0.66, 2.67, 3.70, and 2.76 for the compulsive exercise group, the difference between those means, that's representing variability between. Now that was due partly to the differences in the diet approach, difference between low fat versus low carb, but it was also due to the chance that is part of the within group variability. So we have two things explaining the differences in the means, treatment effect plus chance. So we're going to put all of that together. We're going to divide the variance between by the variance within, and that is going to give us a ratio. If that ratio is close to one, there's no difference between these groups. If that ratio is large enough beyond our critical value, then we know that there is a difference. At least one of these groups is different from one of the other groups, and we'll follow up with a post hoc test.